Uh, my name is Kyle Kulbroth. I'm co-founder of COCO, the co-working collaboration space in Lower Town St. Paul and our new location here at the Grain Exchange uh, in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, COCO is a, a unique and, and new intersection of uh, working uh, space here in Minnesota. Uh, co-working started in uh, the Bay Area about seven years ago, uh, geared towards uh, independents and freelancers coming together and collaborating and working together. Uh, COCO is a variation of that uh, theme and we've expanded it to include uh, freelancers, independents, uh, but also small businesses and corporations. Um, and that includes for-profit and non-profit businesses. Uh, in a nutshell, it simply is a place to work, a place to meet, a place to socialize, and a place to learn, um, and a sense of community if you're starting a, starting a business alone. I think innovation is looking uh, looking up right now. Um, we are we have a great university. We have a great university system. Actually, um, we have a lot of talent uh, here that in in the Minneapolis and St. Paul areas that are really um, really have a, a, a unique um, point in time where again they are pursuing things that a uh, combination of things that never have existed before so uh, you know being stuck in in software technology or being stuck in a certain product is design uh, a startup mode um, those things are con converging so I think it's more about integration in the future and those those couple elements that come together to create a third thing. So an A plus a B equals this C, this new entity. And we're just seeing that all over the place. Um, so online, offline integration. And Minneapolis is, is a great market. It's as good as uh, any other market out there. Um, it's not San Francisco yet, but there's no reason why it couldn't be a San Francisco or New York. Uh, we have the skills, we have the educational models, uh, infrastructure, uh, we have the cost of living that makes it advantageous. And now we think with COCO, we actually have um, the community, uh, the, the sense of belonging that's required to get people to build, you know, start building, to build and to stay. Uh, I think um, it's it's the future trend. It's where corporations are going. It's where individuals are choosing to go. It is a new place where um, I am free to pursue not only what I'm good at, but what I love to do. And for it allows me to build a business that uh, that that is that is about that. So I am not. I'm not assigned a job or a position or a certain set of activities. I'm actually doing what I want to be doing and I'm finding a way to, uh, to, to earn a living off that. So I think it's, a, it's going to be critical in the economic turnaround in the future here. Um, you know, as we had Eric Schmidt out here a few weeks ago from Google and you know, he was saying it's not going to be the next large corporation bringing thousands of jobs. It's going to be thousands single jobs, 1,000 individuals starting their own businesses. Um, uh, that is going to turn around uh, the economy. And I think that's both regionally, uh, but especially in Minnesota. I think it's going to be a core piece of our economy going forward. Uh, Jeffrey Brown, and I do business coaching and catalytic innovation. Uh, I help leaders in and around the uh, state of Minnesota and other parts of the country uh, create more innovative cultures in their business world. I was very fortunate to be at Apple in, some of the, in the early years from 81 to 86. And probably the thing that was most innovative about Apple was the fact that Steve Jobs always asked us why. Why we were going to be doing something. Not necessarily what the products were, what the marketing ideas were, what the business plan was, but why we were going to be doing something and what that why was going to mean to society. It had to have a message for society. It had to have a message of how people were going to behave and how we were going to change their behavior. Everything we did was based on the fact that we were going to change the status quo and create an innovative way for people to do things in an easier fashion. So ever since that time, uh, I've been kind of practicing that speak uh, always asking people why they're doing something and then trying to figure out how to accomplish the why and once we've done that 
then the business leader, once they've made that determination, then they can figure out what they're going to deliver. So that was probably the most innovative thing that I learned during that entire tenure that I was at Apple. So now, years later, and I've gotten white hair and I'm out doing independent coaching and not working for any uh, specific organization, but working in and around a lot of organizations, I found that the leaders of the companies here in Minnesota, as well as the uh, people that are running our government, are starting to ask why. And that why is, why is Minnesota going to be become more innovative and why it's important for Minnesota to become more innovative. And we have a, a really nice contingent of both leaders and governmental officials that want to create that answer and are seeking that answer so that they can now start establishing Minnesota as a much more innovative leader across the country in many aspects, including some of the programs that I'm currently working on. Okay, Valerie Wilcox Escada. Um, I have a company called Culture Dig. So my company uh, is a consumer insight and behavioral intelligence. Um, firm and we look for context and culture to help companies um, better understand how to utilize their products, services, um, or, um, what, or their initiatives. So a big role of what I do is understanding context and culture um, in, in, in mentally and then external, internally and externally. I just moved here from Philadelphia uh, about three and a half, four months ago, um, and I, but I'm from here originally. And it's been really interesting to come here because, um, to come to come back. And what I've noticed is that I think in, compared to Philly, um, Philly is very much a independent um, and burge growing culture of innovators, um, doers, thinkers. Um, they are very uh, homegrown, I would say. And there's a very strong made by Philadelphia culture. They're very much into bootstrapping and figuring things out. Um, what they've learned in the process while I was there in, over the last two years, and I think is really fascinating, is that they learned how to, to find each other um, and how to um, depend on each other for resources. And, and that's how they truly learned, I think, to, to innovate. Um, as a city. Um, after that they got a lot of their city officials on board to sort of um, help them m more move in directions to solve problems and to find each other and uh, to figure out really understand how to apply technology to um, everyday life. Um, and I think what I've been seeing here and I think is very similar is that um, Minneapolis has a very strong voice and a very strong culture of, of who we are. Um, and I think that was also a strong parallel I saw in Philadelphia, is they have a very strong sense of who they are, what they are, what they're about. Um, and, and I think that that really enabled them to take it to the next level um, because they're able to form that community. Um, I think if you're going to innovate, you do have to really be able to do that. I think you do have to be able to take these um, different insights and different understandings and different experience, and, and then and then you have to be able to recombine them to make that innovative leap. Um, and we get a, a bunch of people in the room that are really interested in doing that. Uh, some really amazing things can happen. So I think that uh, I think that's happening here. I think it will happen here. I think it's in the process of happening here. Uh, Dan Wallace and I, I do multiple things. I work with uh, companies of all sizes as a marketing counselor. I do creative direction and copywriting. I call that my day job. My, my evening job, which also happens frequently in the day, is I have some products that are in development. They've been in development for many years. Back in 2000, when we had our first economic dislocation. I had a lot of time in my hands, so I came up with a number of products. One um, has been getting traction in recent years. I'm partnering with a large company who's acting as a marketing agent. And meanwhile, I'm developing a business plan to share markets with that company. You know, it's, it'd be really hard for me to say, you know, 
quantitatively, I mean, I, I've, I've seen different studies that indicate in the United States we're anywhere from average, which we're the 14th largest city, so about 14th largest, to below average. Um, you know, my sense is that there is some cultural inertia to welcome and accept failure in this state. There is a tendency towards perfection, which I think leads to excellence in large enterprises. The state is better at optimizing in many respects. Um, the financial markets uh, aren't well suited for startups. They're better suited for mid-range and larger enterprises. So those are some of the problems. The good thing is the, the social culture here is great. Um, the, ec the economy here is significantly better than, than average, which is helpful. Um, and the educational attainment's higher here. So, so there's, there's good and bad you know, that, that, that's going on with regard to innovation and entrepreneurship. What is it gonna take for Minnesota to lead? For Minnesota to lead in innovation, I think the biggest issue is it's gonna to have to create an infrastructure that will help new entities get funding and find the advice they need, and also culturally for there to be more comfort with taking risks and accepting failure.